Hey everybody, it's B Diz, the rock star part of Super Obvious. In this video, I'm doing a quick recap of the 2021 Elimination Chamber. Please like and share the video, comment below, and let me know what you thought about the pay-per-view, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let's go. First off, not including the pre-show, the main show was only four matches, which was about two and a half hours, which is less time than an episode of Raw, and I'm not complaining at all. For the pre-show, we of course have a bunch of people running their mouths, saying something about nothing and nothing about something and a bunch of stuff that we already know. We have a four-way number one contenders match with Mustafa Ali, Elias, John Morrison, and Ricochet. The match ends when Mace and T-Bar both slam Ricochet into the ring post on the outside, which looked and sounded nasty. While that happens, Morrison does a surprise pin on Ali in the ring, winning the match, and joins Bobby Lashley and Matt Riddle for the Triple Threat United States Championship match. Keith Lee isn't competing as scheduled due to a COVID precaution because his fiance Mia Yim, tested positive around this time. We have the Universal Championship Chamber match opening the show that was almost a solid hour. We have Baron Corbin, Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Jey Uso. There's some funny spots with Cesaro scaring Sammy before the match starts. The match starts with Brian and Cesaro, and when it's Sammy's turn to enter the match, he acts like a bitch and keeps his pod closed so he doesn't have to wrestle. And then, the other side of Sammy's pod opens, and Cesaro walks in, and when Sammy turns around, jumps hard as hell when Cesaro is there. Corbin is eliminated first by Cesaro with a sharpshooter. We have Owens hitting Zayn with a stunner, eliminating Sammy Zayn. As Sammy is leaving the ring, Jay slams the chamber door, trapping Kevin's arm. Jay super kicks him like four or five times and then hits the Uso splash, eliminating Owens, which is a big deal because of the beef with Kevin, Owens, and Roman Reigns. Jay Uso also eliminates Cesaro after a super kick and an Uso splash. After trying to Uso splash Brian off the top of the pod, Brian puts his knees up, reversing the move. Daniel follows up with his running knee strike, winning the match. Roman Reigns' music hits, and he comes to the ring to defend his Universal Championship. Brian, who already wrestled for almost an hour, can't even stand up. Reigns tries to spear Brian, which he reverses into the label lock. Reigns gets out the hold and does a bunch of mean ground and pound strikes. He then puts the guillotine choke on Brian, winning the match. Edge then comes out of nowhere and spears Roman. So Edge's decision for who he wants to challenge for a championship at WrestleMania is crystal clear. Backstage, we have The Miz talking trash to Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny says he is a champ and The Miz is not, so like, what are you doing here? Miz pushes Bunny and Bunny slaps the absolute shit out of Miz like he didn't have his money. Mm. When Miz is going to do something, Damian Priest is there, so Miz leaves. Next is the United States Championship between John Morrison, Matt Riddle, and Bobby Lashley with MVP. The climax of the match is when Morrison takes MVP's crutch and Bobby puts him in the hurt lock. Riddle picks up the crutch and hits Bobby in the back twice and does the bro Derek to Morrison winning the match and becoming the new United States Champion, which I feel most people including myself wanted. It's about time he had a singles title. Morrison was a great add to the match and props to him for wrestling twice with almost no break. We have a quick backstage segment with Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Bianca still has a decision to make on who she wants to face for her championship match at WrestleMania, which could be Sasha. Reginald interrupts them, basically flirting with Sasha Banks. We have the women's tag team championship match with the champs Nia Jack and Shayna Baszler versus Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. This again is a pretty good match. The climax is when Banks is pretty much having the match won and Reginald comes out with a bottle of champagne and gives it to Banks in the ring. This distraction causes Nia Jax to hit a Samoan drop on Sasha Banks winning the match. We then see backstage at The Miz with his Money the Bank briefcase is being talked to by MVP. Next we have the second Elimination Chamber match which is for the WWE Championship including of course the champ Drew McIntyre. We also have Sheamus, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston, and Randy Orton. The match starts with Hardy and Orton, and Phillips announces that this is the 28th Elimination Chamber match, which I had no idea there's been that many. First person to join the match is Drew McIntyre. 
there's a spot where Drew lawn darts Jeff into a pod, into a cameraman, and he says, I told you to move, which I thought was badass. Next, we have Kofi released from the pod to enter the match. Kofi and Orton slug it out for like 20 seconds, and Kofi does a pin, eliminating Orton, which I could not believe. Right after that, Styles tells Almost to free him from his pod so he can enter the match early. Almost rips the back of the pod off and AJ tries to make quick pins on Kofi and Jeff. The last release into the match is Sheamus. Sheamus eliminates Kofi with a bro kick. Jeff hits the swanton on AJ, but as soon as he gets up, Drew hits Jeff with a claymore eliminating Jeff. And then we have Sheamus hitting the bro kick on Drew, but AJ hits Sheamus with a phenomenal forearm eliminating him. After that, AJ tries a phenomenal forearm on Drew, but Drew hits AJ with a claymore, knocking him out the air, pinning him, and winning the match. Drew McIntyre's amazing victory is short-lived because he gets speared and attacked by Bobby Lashley. The Miz's music drops, and he runs into the ring to cash in his money in the bank briefcase. He hits the skull crush in finale and pins Drew for the three and is the new WWE Champion. I love Drew McIntyre, and he has been a great champ, but The Miz is one of my favorite wrestlers, so I'm happy for him. So as far as the pay-per-view, it was about two and a half hours with four matches, including an Elimination Chamber match where the winner faces Roman Reigns that night for the Universal Championship. We also have a triple threat for the U.S. Championship, a Women's Tag Team Championship match, and a second Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship. I think the pay-per-view was pretty solid for its runtime. Maybe it's because WWE wasn't prepared, or maybe it's something new they are trying and not overwhelm fans with so much content to watch. Maybe it's better like this rather than fans complaining how there's too much content to watch on a weekly basis. I'm a huge fan too, so I get it. My prediction as far as the WWE Championship could be that The Miz was talking to MVP backstage. The Miz wins the championship. And then Bobby Lashley is going to get the belt from The Miz. And then when Brock comes back, we will have the Brock versus Bobby Lashley match we always wanted and never got. And for the WWE Championship. There was no Alexa Bliss presence during the pay-per-view, especially to Orton, which surprised me. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the pay-per-view and what could happen. Please like and share the video. Super kick that subscribe button for more content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Totally for sure.